home in San Diego, uh, getting ready to go record our second album. Uh, been Los Angeles, California. Uh, producer Mike Green is going to do the record. We're really excited about it. We're basically we're going to go into the process without a finished record and finish it, and you know, and get creative on the spot with uh, with some of it. A lot of it's down already, but there's a few songs that are not quite there yet. So we're just getting packed up now, pretty much. Uh, Time to just dive in with Mike Green and see what we can get done. Basically, I listened to all like a bunch of stuff that Mike Green had done, all his recordings, and every single one of his records just sounded so amazing. The sound of them was so awesome, and um, even though he hadn't done a lot of bands that I knew. Just the records themselves sounded so great that I was picturing, you know, what the band would sound like recorded by him. And that that kind of got me really pumped up on, on, uh, you know, recording with him. So Mike was pretty much just like the perfect match for everything. So I guess going into it, I heard a band with a lot of technical prowess and a lot of ambition, and you know, I feel like they had an opportunity to do something really cutting edge and different, and. Uh, we just felt if we could add some accessibility and some focus and at the same time while taking those technical elements to a more extreme place, then we'd really have something. I had been listening to the demos for a while and you know, I kind of had my feedback based on the demos, and we just jammed for about a week and a half, fleshed everything out, and, you know, really at that point we're just deciding on structures and drum parts, and all the rest can be filled in later, so. We spent this first couple weeks here in, in Hollywood just jamming out the songs together. It was my most feared moment of my life because <laughs> it was uh, basically determining what these songs are going to be in, in like a week. The fact that we came in here and started literally practicing for like a week with all the songs, 12 hours a day, was to me like I was not expecting that. That's like the hump basically for me, right. trying to get over, uh, basically just arrange the songs and then lay down the drums and then from there we can we, can. we got to talking a lot about, you know, what we want the drums to sound like on the record. And we pretty much agreed that we want them to sound uh, like drums. We don't want to sound like perfect triggers. The goal was to go for something that's a bit different for bands in the same circle and, I guess, scene in that we wanted to do something that sounds real. He's, he's very uh, open to having, you know, your instruments actually sounding like instruments, which is great because I, mean, I love my drums to actually sound like drums in the studio. The best part about him was we just got super loose on like, we, we picked up a bunch of vintage snares to experiment with and I think we had like six snares that got put on the record. So. so I think one of the things I'm most proud of is that it does sound like organic and real. So we, uh, we finished tracking the drums at uh, Ocean Studios in uh, Hollywood, California. And uh, Mike killed it in one day. It was a long day, man. I was sweating my ass off. No. DF. DF. He killed it. Huh? 12. In one day. That's a result of being very well prepared, as my dad always says. Poor prior planning leads to piss poor performance. This whole song, you know, don't, you know, don't let up. Who wants me to punish it? Are you doing those floor tom sections there? The do 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 do. I want to hear the eights more defined. I hear just right now. Exactly. Here you go. 
That was fun. Sergeant Pepper. Is that your real name? You're so lonely. Yes. Ready to go. Move the crane down, Scotch. I got it. And then bring it up to uh, eye level here. We're building. Uh, so we moved everything back into my green studio here to do all the uh, guitars and bass and all the other stuff, everything else on the record. I like to just take it song by song rather than instrument by instrument. So rather than doing all the bass, all the guitars, all the vocals, um, I like to just do, you know, rhythm guitar for a song, then do the bass for the song, then do, you know, basic lead vocals, then do um, lead guitars, etc., etc. Today we have uh, Dave Yaden who's going to play keyboards on this album. Dave played keys on the last record as well. He is amazing. Yeah, we wanted to have him be a part of the new record. Big had a couple like piano ideas that he made up himself on his keyboard at home and things like that. But uh, once we let Dave get in there, he really just takes over and brings like a whole new element to it. Like him and uh, and Mike Green are both really into theory, so they can just talk in numbers and letters like all day long, like as he's playing. Like, oh, do the major fifth and, the, and just back and forth, and they just they just pump out a song like no problem just by talking. It's pretty insane. I don't like being with uh, the band because they're simple. You got something else to say, Dave? Like, we heard what you just said. He's basically putting you on. I've done my best to speak my mind. I don't think I can speak it any clearer, to be perfectly honest. Completely satisfied. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Print that. Since we've got here, we've, we've been working 12 hour days the entire time. So if I'm not here, we, we pretty much go straight home and go to sleep. We, just, we don't do anything fun. We have uh, go home, watch a movie, and, and, and pass out pretty much. We get here, we get up in the morning, get here at 12, and, and we're here all day. And Tony messed up the chimes. I don't know what happened. It's a tough instrument. <laughs> Play drums for the first time in three weeks, and now they're telling me to stop. There it is. Save it. Oh, good. That was painless. That was gonna take me hours. Let's do this. What are we doing in here? Changing my voicemail. Sounds good. As far as our structure goes on this album, I've always been a fan of the fact that we have like a lot of a, the, the songs are constantly changing. You know, there's always different parts, and he's helped us find a way to still have that aspect in our music and, and keep everything moving and changing throughout the song, but have a basic structure there. Still interesting and smart. It's just accessible. Um, you know, for example, I think the song "Saving Myself" is of that nature. Um, that's probably the best example. That's one of my favorite ones. This record was based off of, uh, you know, doing it for the kids and, and doing it for the shows. So um, it's going to be kind of uh, interesting to see how these songs yeah. feel live. Because we, we wrote them to, to play live. And we haven't played them live. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's also some of the heaviest stuff we've ever written to. Yeah, yeah so it's pretty. It's pretty. It's, yeah, I can see some kids doing a little head walk. Yes. A little head walking. It's also some of the some of the softer stuff I've heard too. Yeah. There's some there's some there's some good soft stuff on there too. It's definitely uh, a we good, just, we good just mix. Stepped up right for, there for the family. I don't know how we did it. <coughs> no cuss words. The there's cursing. no cuss words. No, there is. There's, of course there is. <laughs> I was like, I if not, I'm gonna say fuck in the end of the record just so that we have to put parental <laughs> advisory. Where are we at? The whole time we were touring, we didn't. We tried to write, but we didn't actually sit down and do it. So we had really no clue. Like, like yeah, we've been around Vic for two years, but we still don't know what it's going to be like to write with him. 
but once we actually started getting things going, it's it's just everything flowed together so nicely. Well, Tony and Jaime used to be in like a way heavier band uh, before they joined this band, and uh, so they're able to bring this whole other element of uh, I don't know, just bringing heavier elements into our in our music that they can be really fun to play live and stuff and, and also since we've all been playing together shows so much together we we can all kind of bond on on um, what we feel is going to be really uh, awesome on stage you know when we get back touring again. So. Tony and I were in a band and uh, Vic and Mike were also in a band and those two bands kind of did their own things. Um, they met Tony at, at uh, you know at the, at the guitar shop or whatever and uh, at the time I, I we weren't you know Tony and I weren't jamming at all but he gave me a call and said hey um, I've been, you know, jamming with these guys, and they need a bass player. And I think the first day, met up with uh, with Vic, and we kind of jammed. And like from then on, I was just like, this guy's amazing. And then I met Mike and, and jammed with him all together. And like I love Tony; he's you know one of the best guitar players I've, I've uh, you know got to, got a chance to play with and stuff. And, and Vic's amazing, and so is Mike. So we kind of just joined forces. <laughs> funnier things was just kind of uh, Jaime consistently putting his foot in his mouth. And Why don't we just make a video game of our band? No, no, how about this? It, turned the disc, it has this on tour. Turned, it comes two discs. One disc is a regular CD, the other disc is say eight tracks of one song, but it's all just random parts and they have to put the parts together some way. And until you put them together the right way, the, the song won't not, play. The song, or the song won't I think I like my idea better of actually making a video game of our band. Who did that? Flaming Lips. 74 degrees, 74 degrees. We're gonna tell him it's 77 degrees because we're not gonna pay the bill, so he has to pay it. Sorry, my green, but you're the best. 74 degrees. 74 degrees. 74 degrees. So it's gonna work out. We got Spielberg on board. If we don't get no toast, then we don't eat no rolls. Wow, I want him to do the, the over, over, over ridiculous laugh. He's like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. has he done that ever? No, he won't do that. Oh. I'm just hoping one day you'll just kind of <laughs> over exaggerate your laugh. I am at uh, my friend Todd Bouchamp's house. He has lended me his studio. Uh, I call it Studio B to do all the vocal work for the album. As you can see, it is pretty much uh, the most perfect place I could think of to uh, try and write stuff. Pretty much saved the record for me, being able to use this place, because uh, I needed the place during the day to write and to work on stuff before I went and recorded. So, uh, spend pretty much every day here writing, and uh, it's awesome. Guys, this is Toby. He doesn't like me too much, I, although I really like him. Hey, Toby. You know, he's a nice guy, but. We've got better things to do. Stand around here, be on your stupid DVD. I hate it. I'm sure the uh, other dudes are home uh, working just as hard as I am, you know? Uh, the hard workers, I mean, these guys. You know that I love sheep cows, baby. Lyrically, the album is kind of kind of diverse for me. Like I, the lyrics have been I've been writing for the last couple of years. Um, I kind of just keep uh, notes, and, and I, I'm constantly writing and, and taking things down. And uh, you know, when it comes time to actually like make the songs, I kind of go back uh, and 
take things that I've written and then kind of add on to them and stuff, so. Specifically with this album, it would be good if people come away like feeling like we evolved together as a band and and didn't try and, and just do something that was supposed to be next or, or do something that we expected kids wanted to hear. Like I, I hope that people come away with it thinking like, okay, pierce the veil, you know, took everything they learned along the way and, and made an album and took that time to make themselves better as musicians. I hope that's what how people feel about the next album. We're currently working on just basically kind of going part for part, finishing the vocals as we go. Um, like I'll write something and then I'll come in, you know, the next day and record it. It's a good routine, like I just, I just write all the time and then I come in here and um, record and then write here at night as well. Like on the other day I was in here for like 14 hours or something insane, just, just working on vocals. And... I like a lot of harmonies. Uh, love doing harmonies. One of my favorite things in the world. Uh, and uh, sometimes I just don't know when to stop, and I just keep adding harmonies, and it's just uh, a good time. And uh, producer Kyle loves it. <laughs> a lot of vocals. <laughs> Uh, it's one in the morning. We're uh, still in LA at the studio. Uh, we're wrapping things up. Um, I'm just doing the finishing touches on the vocals, and then uh, I leave for a tour in about two days. So uh, we're trying to wrap it all up, get it done before I leave, and have a new record. Dude, we're almost done. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, it's cheesy and fake. Stop that. Yeah, not mine. Yeah. my pop, the painter, we call him. It's the real painter right here. Uh, you're on the DVD. They are our biggest fans. They'll listen to like the shittiest demos that I give them like way before. They've you know, been listening to the stuff. They're actually like, my dad will be the first person that I'll show anything to. He'll come into the band room and like, like groove out to it for a while and like, I'll just like get his like opinion on it. And, uh,